In this example, I want to take a look at the mean value theorem for integrals, and I want to apply it to this function, f of x equals 2 times the secant squared of x, and I'm going to do so over this closed interval, negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. So the prerequisite here, before we can use the mean value theorem for integrals, is this function has to be continuous over this entire closed region. Well, secant uh, is continuous over its domain, but we have some domain gaps, uh, namely some vertical asymptotes at, let's see, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so forth. But it looks like this negative pi over 4 to pi over 4 is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so it will be continuous over this entire function. And remember here, on this left side of the mean value theorem, it looks like we are doing a definite integral. And remember, definite integrals actually give us the area of a region bound, and in this case, it's bound above by the graph of 2 secant squared x, and it's bound below by the x-axis. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of that. We can see that it's continuous over this interval, and we'll also see that shaded region that we're finding the area for. Okay, so that's what that area looks like. And we're saying with our mean value theorem for integrals that this area is the same as this f of c, which is a y value, multiplied by b minus a, which is actually the width here of this interval. So that's kind of an x value. So what this says is we can take that area with that curved top and we can kind of smoosh it down into a rectangle whose height is this f of c value, this y value, and whose width is the width of this interval. And so our mean value theorem says that uh, we're guaranteed some value of c that's going to be in this interval, that when I plug it into the function, it'll give this height for the rectangle. Also, this f of c is the average value of the function. Okay, so let's go ahead on this left side of the equation here, let's go ahead and do this definite integral. So we're going to go from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4. And we're doing it, of course, for 2 secant squared x with respect to x. Well, this 2 is just going to be a constant, so I'm really focused on integrating the secant squared. And that's actually really nice because the integral of secant squared is just tangent x. So this 2 can just come along for the ride. And we're going to evaluate then from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's 2 times the tangent of pi over 4 minus 2 times the tangent of negative pi over 4. Which the tangent of pi over 4, let's see, pi over 4 is just 45 degrees and that tangent will just be 1. So minus 2. So the tangent of negative pi over 4 is going to be negative 1. So as I kind of wrap this part up, the two negatives kind of swoosh swoosh and make our uh, lives a little easier, make it a positive. So 2 plus 2 equals 4. All right. So we're saying this area then, the left side of this equation, is going to be 4 square units. So I'm going to go ahead and say 4 equals that f of c times the b minus a. Okay, well, the b and the a we have values for. It's the f of c that we're solving for. And, of course, the b minus a is this pi over 4 minus negative pi over 4. So I'll put that in here. It's the pi over 4 minus a negative pi over 4, which, once again, the negative and the subtraction kind of swoosh swoosh. So what we have here is 4 equals f of c times... So pi over 4 plus pi over 4 is 2 pi over 4, or just pi over 2. So I can multiply both sides of the equation by 2 over pi, and that will cancel the pi's, cancel the 2's. That f of c then is isolated on that right side, and it looks like it equals 8 over pi. So we're saying this f of c, which uh, is the height of that rectangle, and it's also the average value of our function, 8 over pi. 
So what we're going to do in order to find that value of c that's guaranteed here by the mean value theorem for integrals, we're going to take that 8 over pi and we're going to set that equal to our function 2 secant squared x. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for x and in doing so that'll give us that c value in our interval. Okay, well let's start by multiplying both sides by 1 half and that will get rid of that 2 over there. So it'll also cancel some stuff, so 1 and 4. So we're saying 4 over pi equals secant squared x. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the square root of both sides. And this is the square root of 4, which is 2, and over the square root of pi. And of course we have this plus or minus out front here, so that'll kind of come along with it. And that will equal, let's see, the square root and the square cancel. So it equals the secant of x. So what I'm going to do is take the inverse secant of both sides. So I have the inverse secant of plus or minus 2 over the square root of pi equals, well, the inverse secant of secant is just going to leave me with this x, which again is that c value that we're looking for. Okay. So how can we do this? Well, secant, remember, is the uh, inverse or the reciprocal of cosine. So what I can do is the inverse cosine, but I have to flip this ratio over. So it'll be plus or minus the square root of pi over 2 equals x. And of course I'll have two values, one for the positive and one for the negative. Let's go ahead and grab a calculator real quick. Make sure that it's in radians so this works. And so, let me push it over. Okay, here we go. So inverse cosine, so inverse cosine of, we'll do the positive one first. So the square root of pi, and we are going to divide that by 2, close off those parentheses, and uh, I have 0 0.48166, so let's go ahead and round it to three places because the graph I'm going to show you here in a moment has it rounded to three places. So one of these values of x is positive 0.482, okay? And let's do the other one then. So we have the inverse cosine of negative, and we're going to do the square root of pi, and that's going to be divided by 2, and enter. Okay, it gives us this 2.65, but that's outside of our range, so let's go ahead and subtract pi from that and uh, we'll get the other one of our values, which you'll see is going to be the negative version of this. So x also equals negative 0 0.482. Okay, so there's our calculator. So we have two values, and both of them are going to be uh, within the acceptable interval. One of them is negative and one of them is positive. Okay, so we have found two values of c, actually. At least one was guaranteed by the mean value theorem for integrals, but they were actually two. So let's go ahead and finish this problem up by looking at a picture of that rectangle whose width is the width of our interval and whose height is the average value of our function, that f of c, and also that ordered pair where kind of all of that stuff comes together.